In today's video, I show you how to install and configure WireGuard VPN on your Unraid server and how to set up the remote clients that you want to connect to it. WireGuard VPN is a simple, fast, and modern VPN solution allowing you to have secure remote access to your home server. Let's get WireGuard set up. But before we get started, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a monthly publication with Unraid news, written out guides, and more. Sign up now so you don't miss out. Before we set up WireGuard, there's a few things you're going to need to do first. This is either going to require a static WAN IP address, or we can use a dynamic DNS service to keep the DNS records updated. I personally use the dynamic DNS, or DDNS, through my domain provider. Since everybody will be using a different domain provider, or you just don't have one registered, we'll use DuckDNS. If you already have a static WAN address, then you can just skip this part. To get started, let's go to our web browser and go to duckdns.org. Once you're there, you'll notice across the top, there's several different ways of signing in. Just choose your favorite method and sign in with your account. I'm just gonna do my Google account here. Once signed in, we're gonna to need to create a subdomain. Choose one of your liking. I'm just gonna keep it nice and sweet and simple. And this dang keyboard. All right, type in your subdomain name and click add domain. And then you should see success domain, whatever you named it, added to your account. And down below, you'll have find the domain listed there, the current IP address of your WAN. We're going to need to keep this page open, so leave it open so we can refer back to it. So now we'll need to go back to our server and install the DuckDNS container. So go back to your server. We're going to go to the Apps tab. And the search box, we're going to search for DuckDNS. The icon's kind of hard to miss. It looks like a big yellow rubber ducky. So you click onto that and click install. We're gonna jump down to the subdomains option down here and we're gonna remove what's in there. We're gonna put in the subdomain that we created over at DuckDNS, which for me was AT42. Next option down is the token. So we'll go back to our DuckDNS page. Across the top in the first section, you'll find the token listed up there. So we're gonna copy that, go back to our Unraid container and paste that in where it says token. We're gonna to scroll down, make sure it says IPv4 and we're going to hit apply. And while that's installing, I want to let you know that our Discord server is up and running. Come join us. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, ah, it's done already. That was quick. So go ahead and hit done. I'm going to go back to our Docker tab, find DuckDNS listed there, and then turn on the auto start. There we go. The first part's done. And if you're getting some value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe while you're down there. Let's set up the WireGuard VPN now. To do that, let's go up to settings and then down to VPN manager underneath network services. Now under the tunnel here, it's going to ask for a local name. So we're just going to name this something that you'll remember. I'm just going to call this Alien VPN. You, know, you can name it whatever your server name is, VPN. You can name it you know, Bob's your uncle. It doesn't really matter what you name it, but just give it a name so you know what it is. Helps if you spell it right, though. And then for the local private key and the local public key, over on the right-hand side, you're going to click on Generate Key Pair, and that'll generate those two keys for you. And then under Local Endpoint, it currently has your local IP address, your, your WAN address, if you have a static address, then go ahead and just leave that alone and you're all set. If you don't, and you're gonna be using the DuckDNS, then we need to go back to our DuckDNS server. And we're gonna grab the subdomain name from over there. So right in the middle there, it says domain at at42.duckdns.org. That's the thing we're looking for. Whatever yours is named, just go ahead and copy that. And we're gonna go back to our container and we'll paste that in where it says local endpoint. And then you're gonna hit apply. Next thing we wanna do is up here at the top, on the right side of the tunnel WG0, you've got a few different options up there. First of all, it's inactive right now, so we want to turn it on and make sure it's active. Go ahead and toggle that bar. And then I would probably turn on the auto start. That way it's it's running if you ever need it. If your server restarts or whatever, you, you definitely want to make sure it's still running. So we'll turn on the auto start. And note the remark here where it says, configure your router with port forwarding of port 51820 UDP to whatever your server IP address is with that port number. So you'll have to set up a port forward within your router to forward UDP traffic on port 51820 to your server's IP address. And since every router is different, I'm going to send you over to portforward.com and I'll leave a link in the description for this. Let me bring it up real quick. And then down here, you're going to find router guides. We're going to go ahead and click on that. Scrolling down, you'll find a list of pretty much every manufacturer out there. So you'll find whatever your router manufacturer is and let's say you know a cisco linksys 
find whatever device you have. Well, let's say the E3200. I'm just randomly picking stuff here. And it gives you directions step by step on what you need to do. Open your web browser, go to the address bar, type in the IP address to get to it, log in, and you should know your ID and, and password to log in. Go to the port forward section and go to the basic setup applications and gaming it just walks you through it step by step what you need to do the one thing you'll need to keep in mind here is that you need to forward the udp ports for port number 51820 to whatever your server's ip address is in this example here they're doing xbox live stuff so obviously that's not going to apply so once you've got your router all set up then we can move on to setting up the devices that we want to connect to the vpn so we'll go back to our container here if you're not in the vpn section to get back there you go up to settings and then VPN Manager. And it'll take you right back to where we were at. All right, to add a peer, you simply click Add Peer, pretty simple. Give it a name. So I'm gonna name this one, like, you know, my cell phone or something. <sighs> Dang keyboard. And my keyboard's dying, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's double typing letters all the time now, or it's just not typing letters at all. It's fantastic, it's really annoying. I had this happen a couple months ago. I took every key off the keyboard, washed them all, cleaned out all the dust, you know, cleaned it all up. It took you know, a couple hours for everything to get it all clean and dry and all that. And then within a matter of, like I said, two months, it's doing it again. So it's it's time for a new keyboard. All right, back to the video here. So just under peer name, you know, name it whatever you'd like. In this case, like I said, my cell phone. But if you're gonna do like your laptop or your MacBook or something like that, just go ahead and name it that. Jumping down to peer type of access. This is kind of neat. If you uh, click over here, just has a little tool tip, click on it, it expands it, shows you a graphical picture of each connection type and, and what they are. What we're looking for is the remote tunneled access, which if you look at the picture down here, we're basically going from our remote machine into our server, and then we're accessing all the internet and everything through that. You go ahead and click over there to get that off there again. Then we need to generate a peer private key and a peer public key. Simply hit generate key pair, and that does that for you. Then we're going to need a pure pre-shared key. So click on generate key and you'll see that it creates a key for you there as well. Go ahead and hit apply now. Now, if you look over on the right, you'll find an eye icon and clicking on that eye, it'll open it up and it'll show you the configuration for that connection. Depending on what device you have, you know, I'm using a cell phone. So what we're going to do is grab your cell phone, you go to your app store and we're going to look for WireGuard and we're going to install that. So now that we have the app open, we're going to click on the big blue plus in the bottom corner, and then we're going to scan from a QR code. Point your phone at your screen, get the capture the QR code. That comes up with import tunnel from QR code. We're going to give it a name. So I'm going to name this uh, demo server. I'll just call it demo. And we're going to click create tunnel. And now you'll see the connections on your phone. So to turn it on, we're going to open up WireGuard, which we already are, and then just Toggle on the little on and off for your connection there. So I'm going to find demo, toggle it on. There you go. It's connected. I'm on the same network, so it's not going to do a whole lot of good here. But if you're out and about, you can just leave this on and it'll just route back through your network. Now, if you want to do it on a desktop or on a, a MacBook, you're going to go through the same process. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to click done on this page to get rid of that. I'm going to add another connection for my laptop. I'm not going to show you on that laptop. I'm just going to do it on my desktop so you get the, the process. But that's what it's for. So we're going to click add peer. We'll give it a name. We'll call it. Ah, come on. Dang keyboard, laptop. I'm going to drop down and select remote tunneled access for the peer type. Click generate key pair. Click generate key. Hit apply. And then you've created a new peer. So we'll go ahead and click on the eyeball icon for that one. Once again, there's your QR code, the information. This time we're going to hit download. I'm going to open that up. Once that file is downloaded, go ahead and hit done. Once again, on our browser, we're going to go over to wireguard.org or .com rather. Ah, stupid keyboard. Find the installation option and you basically find whatever operating system you have and <laughs> it's got a lot of different options. So if you have a Mac OS device, you're going to download it from the app store. If it's a Windows device, you download it, you know, the Windows installer. It just downloads the file to your machine. You run it, it's going to install. And once you have your WireGuard window up, you're going to click on Add Tunnel. We're going to browse for our file. You find your WireGuard configuration file, you select it, and hit Open. It imports everything for you. And then to turn on the connection, you simply just hit Activate. 
From that point, you're going to have a secure connection back to your server. So now you just need to repeat this process to create a new connection for each of the other devices that you want to be able to connect to your WireGuard connection. And when you're done using the connection, you simply click deactivate. And let me show you this real quick. So to get rid of these connections, if you're you know, getting a new cell phone or getting a new laptop or something, you'd want to come back in here and delete them out. So you go back into our settings and then VPN manager, find whatever device you want to get rid of and click delete pure. Now, if you want to get rid of the tunnel itself, you'd notice there's no delete option here. You know, you open this up, it doesn't have anything. There's no delete. It's kind of hidden and I don't know why, but it's kind of weird. But anyhow, go up to the top here where it says basic, click that over to advanced. And now there's your delete tunnel. So go ahead and hit on that and hit proceed. So then it removes the complete WireGuard VPN from your server. So there's no way to get back to it. So there you go. Now you have WireGuard set up on your Unraid server and on your remote devices. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out in any of my future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one.